question I always ask is, uh, why did you do the thesis work? Was there that motivated you to um, to conduct this um, this research, to ask these particular research questions, to to work so hard and selflessly for for a number of years to answer those research questions? That to me is the, the fundamental question that examiners should always ask, and most examiners do ask. And it is a question that you need to reflect on and understand very deeply. Sometimes we join a project and we uh, borrow research questions from that have been predefined. Sometimes we take to an area of research because we deeply believe that that, that is um, the most important thing that, that we are put on earth to do, uh, and so on and so forth. Whatever it is that motivated your work, in the end, even with the benefit of the hindsight, you need to be able to articulate really, really well. You need to articulate it from your human values um, and, and from your technical values and from uh, also the, the deep specialism that has been um, called to bear uh, during the, the thesis work. So it's not an easy question and it hasn't got a simple single lens answer. It's actually quite complex and, and it needs splitting and uh, and and answering um, um, the question is answering really really properly at the beginning. In order to um, get the students to talk about their research, I will ask something like, "Tell me about your research. Tell me about the motivation for carrying out this research, um, or why did you choose this particular topic, um, or, or things of that nature." So they're just really there to. Um, to get the students to talk about their work and and to relax a little bit uh, within the Viva um, environment. The second favourite question is, uh, what will change in the world because of of your research work, because you did this work? What's the outcome of it? What's the impact of your work? What is the legacy that your four years of research will leave in the world of research and in in our society, in the broader um, scheme of things. We do research with a purpose. What was the purpose of your research and what is the outcome of your research endeavour? And and again, this is a a deeply meaningful question that is, is asked now much more than it used to be in the past uh, and be prepared to answer it from the viewpoint of impact and research impact. And to answer it well, you will need to make sure that before your viva, you understand really well what research impact is all about. And I should hope that nobody out there uh, undertakes PhD research unless there is a um, a, a projected and prospective impact to be had from that research and from the results of that research. So as an examiner, okay, we've read the thesis, we've read your story, we understand the work. Now tell us about the order in which the work was really done rather than the order in which you presented it here in the, in the, in the thesis. I like that question because it puts the viva very much in the territory of the candidate. It provides uh, real op- opportunities for them to talk about what they have been doing for the, for, for the last um, th- three years or so. Hopefully their response is going to give me as an examiner uh, real confidence that it's them that has done the work, which is pretty much automatically a, then a tick in the box of... Uh, is this the candidate's uh, own work? Because if it isn't their own work, then they won't be able to give uh, a, a, a good story uh, or, or a good response to that question of uh, how was it done? Because almost certainly the work will not have been done in the order that's presented in the thesis. A question I like to ask at the end, and this can be quite a challenging question, is uh, I would ask the student, if you were to start your PhD again, and knowing what you know now, would you do anything differently? And there's no right or wrong answer to that question. It's just probing to see if if there are uh, things that you've learnt and um, in hindsight, whether that would have influenced the the direction of of your research. My third favourite question is to do with what are you going to do next? 
now that you've done this research work. And I'm not talking here about what employer are you going to join or what precise future work you are going to be executed because you've written it into your last chapter of the thesis. But really and simply, it's it's a matter of looking at the VIVA um, uh, as as the the driving test and and upon the driving test when you pass it you get a license your license would be the license to research you become a, re- a licensed researcher uh, once you are awarded a PhD and the interest here in the question is what exactly are you going to do with that license and and, and um, um, different students different awardees different doctorants once awarded do different things. Some go and pursue academic careers to, um, to to further the research in that field or additional fields or to use their uh, research transferable skills that they gain to apply themselves to new problems that are now more attractive um, to them. Some some students will go into, into industry and are more interested in taking the research that they've done or um, the ecosystem that they've created around their research and applying it directly to an industrial or societal setting. And some students say, I've had an experience, I am richer than I was and I'm going to pursue a um, a teaching career or a, or a different different career altogether in a, in a third um, third um, um, sector. So so it, it is an interesting to the examiner. To me, as an examiner, it's very interesting to understand what you what you are taking with you from from the experience that you've had uh, from the thesis. And and I appreciate that that is uh, for some um, a, a very private um, uh, answering a very private. Um, type of question, but I, I I would ask you to reflect on it, to reflect on it not because the examiner might ask it, but because it's important for you as a doctorand to know what happens next with all of the baggage of knowledge that you've you've absorbed and you've generated yourself also during such a lengthy program. Also, some quite interesting answers can come out, and quite interesting insights can, can come out when uh, the, the candidate answers that question. There are then things that can be picked up uh, later on in the either when we get to uh, various result sets or bits of conclusion or, or, or what have you, or various findings. Sometimes the, the thesis can actually make quite a lot more sense or the way the, the thesis presented can make quite a lot more sense if you've, uh, if you've got that, um, the answer to that, to that question. And it can make it a bit of a more uh, an interesting and, and uh, human experience as well. My fourth um, favorite question it's it's about robustness and rigor of your research and and I would ask you up front um, h- how do you know your work is rigorous? How do you convince me that your work and your results are robust and that you've conducted um, your research rigorously uh, and and again, depending on discipline, depending on method, the answers will be very different if you are an experimentalist you have to 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 convince me of the the robustness of the experimental setup, of the reproducibility of your results, of the number of takes that you've done to um, um, to, to demonstrate that that your results are repeatable, and the statistical analysis that you've done on those results, for example, to convince me that the level of uncertainty in um, in the measurement is acceptable and that the, the level of variability in your experimental results is as you would expect in that discipline for that type of experiment. So I will be asking precisely what makes your work rigorous, what makes it robust, and I would expect a very technical answer um, in response to that. So I hope my discussion on my tips have been useful for you. Um, and above all, relax and enjoy the Viva and good luck. <laughs>